We're Hayley and Brad, and this is our Australia trip. Well, just like that, we made it. We made it. <laughs> So in today's episode, we're going to head out to the most western point of the Australian mainland and experience the raw and untouched beauty of Steep Point. But to kick things off, we head out to Monkey Mire and check out one of the most popular resorts in the area. Monkey Mire is an oasis in the middle of nowhere, and it's really popular for its dolphin feeding right off the beach. This is included in our $15 entry fee, and we're lucky to join the tail end of the session here this morning. Well, we've decided today to do something a little bit different. We've come out to Monkey Mire. We were gonna stay here, but um, we decided against it. We decided that we'll just stay at Big Lagoon, but we still wanted to come out here for a day trip. So you gotta pay $15 to get into the resort, but you can come out here for a day and uh, still enjoy all the facilities. So they've got a few pools, they've got a bar, they've got a cafe, they've got all the things. So we're gonna spend the whole entire day here and um, just relax and yeah. enjoy. So we'll take you along a little bit for the day and uh, see what we get up to at the Monkey Mire Resort. Well, our R&R &R day is off to a good start. <laughs> this emu wants my food. So we've parked ourselves up at this beautiful little nook in the beach here at Monkey Mire. It's so beautiful and we've just got the paddleboard ready to go. We're going to head out there and see if we can see some dolphins. It's the power of backpackers. Well, after five amazing days at the Big Lagoon Campground, we are finally leaving. We kept extending our stay here because it was just that good. And even now after five days, we still could stay for longer. But there are more incredible places to see. So we're gonna keep on heading north. So today is just a bit of a job stay. We're gonna head into Denham. It's about 30 Ks away from here. We're gonna to go to the shops, top up on water. We haven't filled up in water for about a week now. We've been able to do a few loads of washing still, so we've been doing pretty well. So we'll top up on water in Denham, do the shopping, do the cleaning. I think Brad's gonna clean the caravan there. Yeah, there's a bit of um, salt, like, cause the National Park here has salt flats and stuff, and there's a bit of salt flat mud on the um, car, so I need to get rid of that. I'll give it at least a spray down, but yeah. I've just um, let the tires down a little bit more because the road has actually deteriorated mm. between the time that we come in and now, and we've seen it going in and out of the national park and coming in and out of the campground, that the road's gotten a lot drier, the sand's gotten a lot drier and dustier, and it's a bit more boggy. Um, so yeah, I've dropped the tires a little bit more. They're all down pretty much around 18 PSI now. And we also are about 400 kilos lighter from all the water that we've used while we're here. I'm so pleased with the Ozglide, the way it handles through this snaky, yeah. corrugated, soft sand road. So we'll get some sh shots of that, hopefully. Like that you were, we'd go through a hole and 
Brad would be like waiting to feel the van go through the hole as well that you just didn't feel yeah, it. Yeah, like usually you wait for the van to go through and the van will sort of upset the car a little bit and you'll counter steer to correct it. But um, I was getting none of it. So it's been, <laughs> the Ausgleiter's made it a dream to um, drive off road with this van. It's been a good test for it. Yeah, so um, we're all hitched up and ready to go. So let's get going. Happy Out to days. Den Denham? Denham? Denham. Denham. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss this site. <laughs> Top notch. I've never seen before is that the national parks have installed their own tire inflation station here in the park at the start of the park so it makes it a lot easier for us to not have to use a car compressor <laughs> On our way out of Denham, we stopped at the Ocean Park Aquarium to learn about the marine life in the Shark Bay area and beyond. The tour really helped us brush up on the unique species that call the WA coastline home and will help us identify the marine life from tasty to protected to fatal. The tour was really enjoyable and educational and it's been great putting what we learned here into practice on our snorkels and dives in the area. been a massive day after leaving the campsite. We've punched it about 40 minutes outside of Denham and we're camping at a Telstra Tower. That's what it's called, the campsite's the Telstra Tower. And there is cracking views over the ocean here. We've got a pretty um, good amount of elevation, but have a go at this. The sun should come up somewhere around there tomorrow. And uh, it's just going down over there somewhere. So yeah, the day is just rounding out. We'll charge our batteries, get everything sorted and ready to go out to Steep Point tomorrow. Cannot wait. We'll see you then. Bye. All right, so we're just interrupting this episode because this week we had a very special milestone. It was our 12 month on the road anniversary. 12 months of traveling full time and living full time in our caravan. Look at us go. <laughs> <laughs> but we thought that we would put out a video that has sort of a Q&A of all things to do with traveling, living in a caravan, working budget, budget yeah, all everything, that sort of stuff. Anything and everything you could think of. If you've got a question about traveling Australia, Chuck it in the comments. Yeah, so chuck it in the comments or send us a message on socials or email, whatever, and we will try and answer it in an upcoming video. How about that? One whole year on the road. We've only made it halfway around Australia. <laughs> All right, back Let's to the episode. Let's get back in the episode. It's a big drive out there. You've got to stay hydrated. Keep this going, a bit of rocket fuel. <laughs> well, we're doing it. The van's gone, we just dropped that off at the Hamlet pool. 
Caravan Park. And it was so good waking up to that sun coming up over the ocean at that Telstra Free Camp. The elevation and the view that you get from that um, camp is just so good looking out at that sun rising over the water and over the bay. But it, the weather is looking cracking for us. There's like barely any wind barely a cloud in the sky and it's all sunshine. Apparently it's about a three to four hour drive out to Steep Point and we've heard a lot of mixed reviews about the conditions of the road. Some said it's not too bad, some said it's really bad, it's corrugated, it's boggy, it's this, it's that, but um, I'm sure we won't have too much of a problem. Really looking forward to seeing what's out there on that track and um, getting out to the most western point of Australia today. What's going on, Brad? Oh, we just dropped off the bitumen here. It goes to dirt and there's quite a few little corrugations. I had the highway pressures with the van, so I run like 50 PSI in the back tires when we have the van on. And I uh, thought I'd just drop them down to about 35. We don't need to go down all the way just yet, but make it a bit softer when we're hitting those corrugations at speed. Air down number two, we've um, just crossed the air down point and the road went from really good to uh, yeah, pretty corrugated. So we're going, not muck around, just going straight down to 18 on the fronts and 22s in the rear. Just a little bit extra in the rear because we've got a bit of weight in there today. corrugated and there's no speed that's comfortable on that stuff so it's about two hours since we started from the turn off out to steep point uh, the sign there said it would take about three hours but we were driving along the soft sand and getting some elevation and we saw this little spot uh, where the track widened enough for us to pull over and enjoy this view. So we thought, what a perfect spot to stop for lunch. Have a little break. I think Brad needs a little bit of a break, hey? My brain's a little bit, bit stressed. Shaken. My brain's a little bit shaken from the corrugations. Over there, you got some massive like sand dunes. The landscape's like completely changing from this salt flat, like then there's a salt mine stuff over here, like a really shallow lagoon sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Good spot, eh? Good spot for lunch. I want to put the drone up, but I just saw a massive wedge tail eagle fly past. So. It's a bit cute. There's one of those um, shovel nose sharks or whatever they call him. See if I can sneak up on him. He's just in front of me here. You see him? Cool, the water's nice. So oh, by the way, we made it to Shelter Bay. Yeah, but that's Dirkhart Hog Island right there behind us. So we made it to the nice part of the beach. We were driving in past the ranger station, almost went straight past, but then we saw on the sign it said, stop, tourists must report to ranger station. So we drove on in here. How good is this spot for their station? Check out that view. That water is crystal clear it's too. beautiful. Wow, very Fraser Island vibes. Yeah, what a spot. But yeah, so we just uh, pulled in here, had to let them know our booking name and that, and they just checked it off. And off we go. We're about 10 k's from the point now. It's about a k to camp, but we'll blow past our camp. Maybe we'll stop in and have a quick look. And then we'll go to the tip and have a look out there. You beauty. Looks beautiful it here.
just like that, we made it. We made it. <laughs> it was probably 30 kilometers of crappy corrugations and the rest of the driving was actually pretty good. I just think I was having a bit of a mood at lunchtime and I was a bit over the corrugations, but they didn't really get that bad. No, nah, the road was fine. I was saying like, why can't you bring a van? I know, I get that you can't bring vans in because it was like one way track and yeah. that. But if you didn't have to contend with other traffic, yeah, the track wasn't to really, get the van in yeah, here. That big of a deal. But here it is. And so just a little fun fact, the steep point sign, the coordinates on the sign do not match the actual location which that sign is standing. Those coordinates are like a kilometer over that way somewhere. Very beautiful. And I can't believe our luck with the weather today because yeah. it is just mint. Uh, and I'm itching already to get back to camp and get in the water because it, it looks, looks so, so beautiful there. good. Yeah. This whole area looks a lot better than the photos you see. Hey? Absolutely. I was um, expecting the worst, hoping for the best. Usually when you do that, you get the worst, but we've got the best today. Lucky. Happy days. <laughs> Bye -bye. Let's go to camp, baby. Let's go. Well, I don't mind if I do. Look at this. This is our site right here. Turtle one. Turtle one, right here. Wow, what a spot and what weather. Look how blue the water is, guys. They say it's always windy here, but look at my hair. It's barely even blowing. Yeah, barely the, a breath of the wind. ranger, I asked the ranger if the weather's like this all the time. She's like, oh, you guys have picked some really good weather. <laughs> Usually it's just windy. <laughs> it's so blue here. It is, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Crystal clear that is. I did not expect steep point to look like this. Amazing. You're gonna be hard pressed to get me out of WA. <laughs> Luck. It blows me away every time <laughs> I put the drone up. And action. Just watched the beautiful sunset and now it's time to cook dinner. Because we don't really have a lot set up for camping in the car, I bought one of our frozen meals. So what I did when we were back in Bunbury working, I cooked a bunch of meals and then froze them and then chucked them in the freezer. So at times like this, where we don't want to cook, we can just whip out one of our frozen meals, like the spag bowl, <laughs> and chuck it in. It's nice and easy. And to make it in this, it's defrosted a little bit now, but um, to make it in this nice rectangular prism type shape, what I did was I put it in those Tupperware containers, froze it, and once it was frozen, snapped them out of the container into a snap lock, lock bag so you get your containers back but then they, they're in like you know nice like cube style shape mm. stackable and that, the containers the take up a lot of space as well yeah. the containers will take up half the space in the fridge in the car yeah but we've got like i don't know eight to ten meals in the car and the fridge is like half full and that's including like two months worth of meat as well yeah so, so i just pre-cooked the bag bowl sauce, pre-cooked the pasta, put it together in the portions that we usually have. Lovely. And now we can just chuck it all in here, Reheat give it a it. stir to warm it through again. And then we've got dinner sorted. Easy as that, eh? Happy day. <laughs> That's how you do easy peasy camping on the beach. <laughs>
morning. Morning. That was a successful night, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. So, nothing glamorous, but all it takes to camp out of our cruiser is an air mattress, a sleeping bag, and a couple of pillows. The rest of it is a bit of a mess, but it doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to work. And it's yeah, worked for tonight. It worked so well. We were warm and cosy. Yeah. We heard the waves crashing all night. Beautiful we, campsite. Um, had this part open so we had the breeze coming in. Oh yeah, that's that's another aspect to the camping setup. Just a bit of midgy screen attached to a sail track just to keep any bugs out. But there was really not really any bugs last night. No. We slept with um, the other side of the canopy open without any bug netting. And it was good. So we wanted to look out at the stars and that. Oh, it was amazing. So nice. And then this morning when we, we woke, because we closed it then once we actually went to sleep, but then we opened it up again, looked out and saw an esky <laughs> just out in the ocean. So I've already been like, for a, a rescue mission. Esky. <laughs> I was like, surely not an esky. Fortunately, it wasn't full of fish. It was just full of fish blood. But um, I rescued it and pulled it up onto the beach because this is a massive channel here. It's either going to end out in the Indian Ocean or in towards Denham somewhere. So I pulled it up on the beach and if any of the camp is on the beach here, um, I'm missing an esky. It's right out the back here and I'll see it. But wow, we've got the coffees on. These are good coffees, <laughs> but nice, quick and easy ones. We're going to enjoy the morning. The paddleboard's already pumped up. I've done my work. We can enjoy at least the first half of the day here at this campsite and um, the water is so warm and also so crystal clear, so I want to get in for another snorkel. I did go in for a snorkel this afternoon, but I was scared by a massive stingray that was just sitting right off the ledge. I think I was in the water for about 30 seconds and it was just like sitting there on the ledge. Like, so, anyway, we'll take the paddleboard this time and do a bit of a scout. The abundance and diversity of life here at Steep Point was really put on show for us during our visit. From massive humpback whales frolicking along the cliff faces to bottlenose dolphins teaching their calves to hunt in the protected bay. I even had a brush with around 20 curious yellowtail kingfish who circled me on my morning paddle. It really is hard not to fall in love with this coastline with constant displays from nature such as these. Deep point, eh? It was good. You reckon we'll come back for Dirk Hartog one day? Mm, I'd be happy to just come back here again one day. Yeah, as long as the weather's good, I reckon don't miss out on Steep Point because it actually exceeded all expectations. Yeah, it's beautiful. Apart from the road, but we're about to deal with that now, so we won't bore you with that and uh, we'll see you when we're looking at you. <laughs> Bye. We reunited with little Keddy and headed back to the Telstra Tower Free Camp, an awesome spot to stay before or after your trip to Steep Point as it's really close to the turn off. <laughs> Shell Beach, shells on a beach. That's about it. Yeah, let's go. You got shells in the air, mate. We've made our way up about an hour and a half north of Shark Bay and now we're at Wurramal Riverside Retreat Station. This place is really cool. We've got a campsite right on the river, although it's not actually a river at the moment. It only runs for like a couple of weeks in the year. Um, but I would recommend getting a riverside site if you come here because it's only $4 extra. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head down to the artesian hot tubs because they have a few of those here. We're going to have a nice little bath and then we're going to the campfire dinner tonight. They have a uh, campfire, uh, they have camp dinners every night where you can pay extra 
and they'll cook you up a feed. You just bring your own plates and cutlery um, and you go and have a camp dinner with everyone there. So we're gonna go do that tonight and then I think we'll come back and we're gonna aim to cook some mulled wine over the fire. So pretty exciting afternoon in store for us at Wurrumal Retreat. Well, after a fun night at Wurrumal, we headed north to finally make our way onto the Ningaloo coast. And that's where we'll catch you in next episode. How bloody good does it look? Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you've subscribed so that you see all this epicness in the next video. Cheers. This looks so good. But have a look at this. Welcome to the Ningaloo Coast. The number one spot that we have been most excited for since leaving on our trip.